The only people that I know that are consistently wrong all the time are politicians. They keep their jobs. They just get another appointment or whatever. Or Jim Cramer of MSNBC. Now, if you don't know Jim Cramer, we're going to do a little bit dive into him. And then more importantly, MSNBC and the real estate news is even worse than Jim Cramer. Before we get into that, though, let's do a quick update on the actual data so we understand where the market really is and we can make an informed decision. So first off, I always check interest rates. Last week, rates jumped up a bit, uh, going from 6.7% uh, up to hitting 705 kind of in the midst of all the excitement about the uh, bank failure potentially, which turned out to be taken over recently announced by the feds this morning. And then, it's, and then towards the end of the day on Friday, because there's a flee to quality and mortgage rates are insured by the United States government, rates dropped back down and closed at 6.76%. So rates have still stayed in that 6 to 7% range they've been in for a while. And they've hit the top again of 7.05, coming back down to 6.75. So they've stayed in the range where they've been now for most of the last year. Now, the overall market, though, is also driven by inventory. That's the second important factor. And you'll notice that inventory has again declined, uh, tapping and finally matching 2021. Your last statistics, well, inventory is way higher than 2022 than last year, and it's true. Inventory is significantly higher than last year. But notice the downward trend last year was flat, getting ready to go up. But more than that, notice that the current inventory is well below all the pre-pandemic years. And so when somebody says that inventory is up year over year, well, that's comparing us to a pandemic, pandemic period. That's like saying uh, less people are watching Netflix or less people are baking cookies at home. Yeah, it's a different year than it was a year ago. As a result, less people are putting the house on the market or have to move. Inventory is very tight. And as long as inventory is tight, it is impossible for housing prices to drop significantly. The only way housing prices drop significantly is there's more sellers than buyers, and to, to get the price sold, they lower the price. This is true in individual markets. Let's take a look at Los Angeles, where I live. The housing market now is rated at 41. Is that from a 40 last month? And why is that? Because the median prices are holding, uh, actually going up. The list price is rising. Dollar per square foot is rising. Uh, mean days of market is dropping. So overall, the market in Los Angeles remains very healthy, very active for spring break. You hear a lot about the market in Las Vegas being a lot worse. Let's take a look. Altos Research is a great service that gives you reports for every major city and zip code. In Las Vegas now, the market is a 38, up from 35. And again, the key numbers are, are moving up. We're going to talk about that in more detail uh, as we get into the, into the uh, MSNBC. So <clears throat> let's go a little further. And what I want to say is that the market overall, I mean, the news, is just worthless. Here's an example. Now, if you are a subscriber to Fortune and online you have to pay to read their articles, you think you're getting better than normal analysis. Here is an article by Lance Lambert, one of the, one of the key um, uh, uh, writers for Fortune magazine. And this is just fascinating to me. CoreLogic and KPG make bold housing market calls. One says prices have bottomed, and the other one says we're going to see a sharp correction. You have one saying the prices are going to go down a lot, the other one saying, well, not really. And all Fortune does is kind of quote both these two articles that anybody can see online. You can get uh, CoreLogic or KPG's news release and get all the information that you can put in this article. And so basically, here's Fortune magazine reprinting two other companies, not providing any data analysis as to why one's right or one's wrong, and they're going to charge you for it if you're going to watch, if you want to read the article on the paywall. That's the state of news in America on the real estate market. Now, another core factor affecting the market that gets often unreported is the amount of housing. You see a lot about complaining about housing affordability, especially in California. Politicians are all worried about housing is not affordable, housing prices are too high. It's because they won't build any more housing. A uh, hat tip to probate attorney D. Shackett, sent me this article on Mansion Global that documents it. <clears throat> this article breaks down and says, that we have 6.5 million less homes than we should have, and they use actual data. Imagine that in a news article. Actual data based on a rising population saying that with more people, we should have more houses. Well, duh. 
but we haven't been building more houses. As a result, we're 6.5 million short. We only sell about 5 million a year. So we have a year's worth of inventory, over a year of inventory that we're missing in the marketplace. That's why prices can't go up. Because if you don't have enough houses, people bid on the houses that are uh, remaining. Now, what does the regular real estate market news do to help educate you? Here's an article from Redfin. I love this. Housing market at home buyers monthly payments hit all time high. Ooh, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? It's all time high. Must be bad, right? Well, think about it. What do you buy that's not at an all time high? You go to a movie, movie tickets all time high. You buy a cup of coffee at the same place. Coffee price is all time high. Now, gas has gone up or and down a little bit. Uh, that's been very volatile, but for the most part, everything over time goes up two or three percent a year because of inflation. That means everything over time costs more. Athletes' salaries are more. Tickets are more to go to ball games. Shirts cost more. Socks cost more. Everything costs more over time. That's just a factor of inflation. So when Redfin says monthly payments have gone up over time, housing stocks should go up two, three percent per year on average. And if the housing price goes up year after year after year, you expect the payment to buy the house to be at an all-time high every year. So this is an article they can run literally every single year. They can dust it off and rerun it. Does it tell you anything about the market? Does it give you any insight? No, not really. So that's the state of news uh, in our uh, uh, real estate industry today. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about Jim Cramer and MSNBC. Jim Cramer is a guy who, back in the 2008 Bear Stearns, when the mortgage industry was collapsing, here's what this guy had to say. Let's see if I can get this uh, shared. Peter writes, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is written. If there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 somewhere, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, it would more likely to be taken over. So do you know where Bear Stearns is today? They're gone. People got wiped out. And here's a guy who's paying a lot of money to give advice on MSNBC, he's the star of their shows. And, uh, hmm. But MSNBC is worse than him. He's like the star because the rest are really a lot worse. Let's go into a detail. Here's an article from MSNBC on uh, how, to, how to prove your mortgage score. Um, uh, where are we here? The mortgage rate you get depends partly on your credit score. Well, that's true. But really, it makes it sound so, I don't know, mystical. Their advice is, well, if you just subscribe to uh, lenders, check three scores, but use one number. And then what happens is that company, I didn't pick it up on this one because I don't subscribe to them, but they, but this is an advertiser of theirs. They're going to advertise FICO scores and credit companies. They're going to check your scores and send you notices. So rather than tell you, really, if you said to me, well, Bill, how do I get a better mortgage rate? How about save more money? How about owe less debt? If you're more qualified, isn't it obvious you're going to get a better mortgage payment in the long run, get a better deal in the long run? But no, they're going to tell you to watch your credit score and subscribe to service and check your card credit and then open a new account and move the money over to a new account. All kinds of nonsense in financial education in our marketplace. But they're not going to tell you the truth, which is if you have a larger down payment, you'll lower your credit score and your payments. And if you pay off your debt, you'll save a lot of money monthly. Why not do that rather than check on your credit score? So I think they get some really bad information. Now, this YouTube, uh, CBC is a ne you know, network cable TV company. But this one caught my eye. Look at this face of this lady here. The classic, you know, clickbait, scary face. She's out in a coat outside, outside, I don't know why you're outside reporting on the housing market outside. Uh, she'll tell a story, I'll get to it in a second, but, and then notice the headline, why the housing market is increasingly in big trouble. Not just trouble, oh no, young man, you're in big trouble. This flashes me back to my mother, I'm in big trouble. What's big trouble mean? Again, if housing prices drop 50%, obviously it's bad for people who own houses. Isn't that good for people who don't? They talk about affordability all the time. Isn't that a good thing for that? So I don't know the one's trouble. How about just tell us what's really going on? So let's watch this art a little bit and see what they have to tell us.
Now, notice a couple of things. Rates dropped. Okay, they don't really give you the details there. She says that uh, affordability is um, uh, 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 tight because of the tight uh, of the uh, increasing inventory. Affordability is going up because of increasing inventory. Let's see what she talks about. dropping sharply in January, the monthly payment required to purchase the average home jumped by nearly a hundred dollars by now they don't tell you how much it's hundred dollars of how much is it two thousand dollar to twenty one hundred is it a three thousand to thirty one hundred in a world where the average car payment now is seven hundred dollars a hundred dollar difference of payment on your mortgage doesn't seem very significant to me. Now, this makes it sound bad, and, and I think ultimately it's not good that people can't afford a house. Only 33% of the people uh, uh, can't, I'm sorry, 24% of the people can afford uh, to buy houses in less than the past. That's a decision we've made as a, as a country to make housing unaffordable but not building enough houses in all the markets people want to live in. It's not something that just happened. It's scary. This is the best part coming up, though. Now, she said she went to an open house. One, there's probably in Las Vegas, there's probably, I don't know, 100, 200 open houses a weekend. She went to one, and that one had two buyer sets. Now, you know, it shows no instant insight in the business. Obviously, when you're a real estate agent, you want a lot of people there. But the reality is, if you have a vacant house you hold open every week over a period of months, you might only get one or two buyers. That's a good thing. So... Again, hardly data. There are services that will tell you overall traffic by city on a given weekend if you want to buy the actual data and learn about it. But to say we went to one open house and there's only two people there, to me, is just kind of silly. And then the data she has is bad. Watch this. Here in Las Vegas, a lot of people moved from California thinking this could be where they were going to live in their uh, no state income tax haven and then got the call from work after COVID saying, nope, we got to come back home. In fact, inventory in Las Vegas is now up 200% from a year. Now, again, this lady, the realtor she had said there are people who moved to Vegas and had to move back out. I, that's, I, I'm not sure how often that happens. Uh, you know, again, no data there, just one real estate agent talking. But here's the key thing. Look at this. Inventory of homes up 200%. That sounds really scary, right? You had maybe 100 houses for sale and they have 200. But again, if you look at the Las Vegas data, uh, and we did that. Yes, it's higher than it was a year ago. That's what we call the international global pandemic period. But if you notice that the inventory level, oops, I lost my spot there. The inventory level is lower than almost at any time prior to the pandemic. So the fact that now inventory is up 200% is what we call no longer relevant, not applicable. It's describing, it's making a comparison to data back during an aberration in time when the market was unusually tight because of the pandemic, people moving to Las Vegas, maybe less are moving there now, but still, as I showed you, the market overall is pretty healthy. So CNNBC, let's just recap real quick. They have a lousy, uh, they have Jim Cramer. They have a lousy article on telling you how to get a better mortgage by watching your credit score rather than telling you what you should do is put more, save money and pay down your debt. They have the misguided information about open houses and the inventory. I just think overall they're, they're, they're stretching to get attention, but it's working. If you notice on their YouTube channel, this YouTube's only been out two days, got 168,000 views. They have 2.35 million subscribers to this. Now, I have to say, CBC has some good features about businesses, but this data analysis is just is worthless. What's really happening? Well, the market's pretty normal. Might it fall apart tomorrow with a bank run, I guess? Might it fall apart tomorrow if Russia invades Poland or China invades Taiwan? Yeah, things would change. But as we sit here right now, inventory is pretty solid. Rates are back down below 7%. 
There are buyers who can afford to buy houses and want to buy uh, like never before. So oh, as always, what's best for you? Uh, if you're looking to buy or sell a house, let's find your circumstances and find the right strategy that will help you get the right result. Reach out to me, call me, text me, email if I can help you. Find me on social media. As always, make today your best day ever.